I mean, yeah, that's basically just Pokemon. When you buy a Big Mac, it is a comforting experience. You know exactly what you're getting when you buy it. Also, it hasn't been meaningfully innovated on for the past 20 years. Now, Pokemon, just like the Big Mac, is a product that when it was released was revolutionary for the market. It completely broke through people's preconceived notions of what these things could be. It quickly stormed the world, spotting anime, movies, playing card games, and just like McDonald's, they provided a whole new level of freedom to the consumer. It was the first widely mainstream game to no longer have the player in control of a static party of characters. Instead, there were monsters that you could go out into the wilderness and fight, and the monsters that you fought you could capture and tame. Those became your party. And that made each new region that you visited like this candy buffet where you could unleash your inner child as you trample down all the local fauna, beat them into submission, and then force them to fight each other for sport and glory, and this sounds kind of messed up if you think about it. This baseline formula, fight, capture, train until you're strong enough to go beat a gym battle, is the basic formula we've been playing in the Pokemon games since the original. We've been doing it over and over and over again for decades now. Now, it's at this point you may be thinking, I see where this guy's going. He's gonna say the Pokemon's bad because it hasn't changed. Well, this guy's an idiot. I love Pokemon. And hey, I do too. You know, like I got my foil Mew card from the original Pokemon movie. I would grind out my Charizard before leaving Pallet Town. And I got beat up for my foil Blastoise trading card at school. I love Pokemon and I desperately want for it to be and to better than we have right now. Now, you may also be thinking, well, Pokemon is still selling like hotcakes. Why would they change something that isn't broken? And that's fair. You're right. Change is inherently risky. As businesses grow and scale, they inherently want to reduce the amount of risk that they take on. And any change is risk. Any flop in any sort of design decision could be disastrous for so many jobs, and not to mention the executive salary. Won't somebody please think of the executives? It's also totally possible that they're concerned about letting their fans down. There have been some flops with Pokemon. It's entirely reasonable that this non-publicly traded company actually deeply cares about giving their consumers that sense of warmth, joy, and optimism that Pokemon has come to be known for. The problem is, avoiding risk is also risk. How many bulletproof companies have been completely dismantled by two nerds in a garage. Long-term successful businesses get really, really good at risk management. For example, McDonald's regularly introduces new special limited time items into their menu. Instead of committing right out of the gate to a permanent item they have to carry forever. And they do that to see what is the market like? What do you and me enjoy? What are we ordering? What is worth spending our money on? Taco Bell does the same thing. It's how we ended up with the Dorito taco. So I mean, I guess, thank you, Taco Bell? Really, every fast food chain does this all over the place. It's a smart way to try and bring innovation and freshness to formulas that are already stale, keep people returning. The problem for Pokemon is that they have become so risk avoidant that they aren't introducing anything into the mainline games. Legends RCS definitely did quite a lot of very interesting and innovative things. I'd still like to see it pushed further. It looks like Z to A is going to continue the trend. So, you know, hooray. Now, yes, there have been some progressive innovations over time, like the introduction of shinies and breeding and and they always have their unique gimmick for each game. Like, remember how Mega Evolutions were a thing for like two games and then completely disappeared forever, even though everyone really wants them back? It has come to my attention that Mega Evolutions have been teased in Z to A. Looking forward to that. For the most part, though, innovation has belonged to their much less popular side franchises. If you don't believe me, check out this Reddit poll from two years ago, where the most innovative feature, as voted on by the community in that subreddit, in Pokemon, throughout all of Pokemon's history, was the physical special split. And for those of you who don't know, the physical special split is just them introducing a new damage type to the game. Hardly an innovation worth much discussion. This thread over here is fascinating and speaks to my point pretty perfectly, I feel. Titled, Why Do You Still Watch and Play Pokemon? Nearly everyone is saying nostalgia, comfort, collecting, they know what they're getting, it feels good, but nobody is discussing the gameplay element. 
it's it's all feel related. Now, one or two of the comments do mention gameplay, but in general, we tend to call that an outlier. I am such an advocate for emotionally anchored game design. I really am, but unless value continues to be provided consistently over time, market disruptions are inevitable. Meanwhile, if you Google why do people play PAL World, this pops up, and the very first thing that it says is the gameplay is very diverse and engaging. Now, frustratingly, their sideline content is rich in innovation and wild and crazy new ideas. Like, the fact that Pokken exists is bizarre, and I love it. However, unlike the fast food chains that are constantly experimenting and bringing those experiments that really work into their main menu, Pokemon isn't. They're just letting the cool ideas die. I'm not saying that Pokemon is going to die if they don't nail their next game. Even with the extreme volatility of the games industry right now, they have this massive pool of public goodwill. Like, they're fine for a good while. What I am saying is that they're opening themselves up to competition to come in and slowly steal more and more and more market share from them. Which, over time, will mean the death of Pokemon as we know it. Pokemon has this incredible innovation factory that they're already engaging in. They're building all these cool ideas all the time. It just baffles me that the mainline games completely ignore them. There are a lot of very talented and intelligent people working at the Pokemon Company, much smarter than I am. So I do not know why this is happening. I cannot say that. All I can say is, I'm observing an effect and take some wild guesses as to why it might be. For example, it could be that they want to keep it very child friendly by hiding more advanced stats like same attack type bonus and keeping more difficult encounters out of the main campaign loop so that even little kids can feel like they've accomplished something and finished the game. It could be that they also were trying to shy away from more complicated mechanics. It's hard to imagine a five-year-old really mastering those 18-button input combos with three-frame timings like they have to do in Pocket in order to get the combos to beat the game. It could also be that the executive staff are just too scared to have any sort of change because of the risk it represents. If you look at the people who get really, and I mean really, into Pokemon, they tend to dive deep into areas of the game that are either artificially inflating the difficulty and imposing all new sorts of rules on themselves, such as Nuzlocke challenges or any of the various ROM hacks that are out there, or they dive into the areas of the game that are not a part of the main campaign loop. Now, not all game franchises have taken this risk-avoidant route. In fact, not every JRPG franchise that released at the same time frame as Pokemon has taken this risk-avoidant route. Look at Final Fantasy, a franchise that started before Pokemon ever did. And look how they have evolved over time. Every new game, they have slowly taken steps forward, and what they have now is completely different from what they had before, but it still retains almost all of their core audience. Shin Megami Tensei and Persona right. is another great example of a game that came out before Pokemon did and has come a long ways since their very first incarnations. It's important to stress that both of those series have had their missteps, but because they innovated slowly, most of the time, it didn't ruin the player's experience. An example where they did innovate too quickly would be any of Final Fantasy's MMOs, where they launch and it's terrible and everyone hates it, and then they have to spend years of time, effort, money, and public goodwill in order to fix the mistake. For Pokemon, I really feel this is more of a domino situation than a new Coke. It's not time to throw out the baby with the bathwater, they just need to level up what they're putting out. We can see the market responding to this lack of innovation, and even meaningful updates beyond just extra monsters and slightly better graphics. The indie space is churning out monster tamers left and right as game development tools become more and more accessible to people. And the people who grew up with Pokemon are growing up and they're developing skill sets that they can use to make games that they wish Pokemon would be. Games like Pal World, Dice Folk, Temtem, Karuman, Cassette Beast, Patch Quest, Monster Sanctuary, the list goes on and on. On. But these are all examples of people wanting the Pokemon idea to be expanded on because there's still so much space to explore. I mean, nobody expected anything out of PAL World when it was announced, and yet here we are. You! You could download a free game engine like Godot, spend a few months learning it, and build what you want to see in Pokemon. 
It's not gatekept anymore. Anyone can build games right now. We could have a Pokemon with mid-battle evolutions, impactful arena moves, a story with greater depth, have a UI that actually communicates the mechanics in the game, or have a way to actually build relationships with your Pokemon beyond just telling them to beat up other tiny little monsters. Pokemon doesn't need an entirely new format, just like the Big Mac doesn't need to be anything more than a Big Mac. But they both deserve to be more than they are right now, and you as a consumer deserve it as well.